You're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Donald Cohen realized later in life that poetry is his best creative medium. That's saying something when you consider his career. Donald was the supervising sound editor for the classic Beatles hit, The Yellow Submarine. He was the editor of Heidi in 1968, a TV movie directed by Oscar winner Delbert Mann. Editor of Upon This Rock in 1970, a major TV documentary that featured Orson Welles. And editor of the cult classic Five Golden Dragons in 1967. Rounding off his creative career, an accomplished photographer with exhibits in Switzerland, Italy, and London. Born in Johannesburg, South Africa, attended Oxford University in London, where he remained for 23 years, spending some time in New York City. He moved to Switzerland, where he currently resides. Donald recently released his new collection of poetry, Late Beginner, which conveys the profound impact poems have on individuals' thoughts and insights about life if they're open to it. By the way, the vivid cover of his book comes from his own photography collection. Donald Cohen, author of The Late Beginner, with us on uh, from Switzerland on This Week in America. Donald, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. Right. Um, yeah, well. So yeah, it's, uh, it's great to have you with us. I'm looking forward to having a chance to talk with you and all that you've accomplished in your career, saying that you really feel your best creative medium is poetry. Let's talk about that. When did you realize you had a, a talent for poetry? When did you decide, I enjoyed I, this? It's a, one thing to have a talent, and it's another thing to, to produce something reusable. I think if you go back far enough, I used to, used to try and write poetry when I was at school, and it was ridiculously, well, typically adolescent. Never thought much about it, but um, later on, it uh, crept back towards me, um, and I ran into a gentleman uh, who was a Broadway writer of, of, of theater. And I gave him some poems that I had written. Uh, it must have been in my late 20s, early 30s. See him again, and then he said, uh, well, if I was you, what I would do is take all this stuff and put it in a drawer and open the drawer in 10 years' time, and then you will know what to do. <laughs> and uh, I, I did just that. In 10 years' time, I was living in Switzerland, in Montreux, and started putting it all together. But I, I never envisaged at the beginning that I was going to have a book. I just felt compulsion that I should go on writing. What was it like when you went back to the drawer and you pulled those poems out? What did you think when you when you read those? And I'm sure you'd matured during that period a little bit. Uh, what was it like reading those poems that you had written in the past like that? Yeah, no, uh, no I don't think I had. Obviously, uh, uh, when I opened the drawer, as it were, uh, it did... Um, it, it, well, it ended going backwards, and then I thought, well, yeah, okay, I'll try and put this stuff together. But uh, that's what happened. I waited 10 years, which is probably a good idea. Yes, and, that, was, uh, that was a good advice that you received. Donald Cohen, our guest on This Week in America, coming to us from Switzerland. He's the author of the book, Late Beginner. Books available wherever books are sold. You can go to Amazon. All the information on the book, on Donald and the book, is available at his website, which is donaldcohenbooks.com. You can link on directly, uh, go directly to his website by linking onto our website, thisweekinamerica.us. What are some of the, the themes that you, you address in the book? You touch on some, uh, uh, some topics that all of us have, have an interest in. What are some of the, the, the topics, the themes that, you, that you've written poetry about? Well, uh, it's funny, there's a lot of um, uh, society, history type commentaries, which I envisaged, uh, and uh, much to uh, surprise to find that the world was going in that direction, and that uh, a lot of these things actually happening, um, like... Um, 
the, the, the way, the, <laughs> I can't remember my own stuff and I have to recite it. Um, but, uh, well, you do so many to topics that we, that we all can relate to. I, you, you talk about aging, religion, war, peace, human conditions. Uh, it's interesting because as you read those, and they're, they're interesting if you read and then go back and reread them, maybe coming from a, a, from a different perspective when you read them for the second and third times. And I, I mentioned in the beginning that you said that uh, uh, poetry is, is good and reveals uh, some of our thoughts and insights about life if we're open to it. Is that a key to understanding poetry is going into it with an open mind? Uh well, I think we're all, we're all uh, tied up with that. Well, we used to be. You know, now things have changed in a completely different direction. But we used to be tied up with an uh, itinerary. The, the things developed, the poems developed, or the, the sign uh, it was uh, the, the culture itself was uh, changing. And a lot of it seemed to have been predictive. Um, uh, and society has been uh, turning back yes. uh, to what it was in the, in the 60s. But then, it, 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 contemporary now, it's, it's all out of sight. The other thing was that uh, the difference between, you know, a narrative and a novel or something like that. Then, of course, in the past, there were no novels. I mean, Spencer wrote six volumes of verse, all exactly uh, uh, put together in the same way. Uh, I, I managed to read one when I was younger. <laughs> and you think he wrote, he wrote this Poem, which was six volumes of, uh, of of a kind of narrative, which was also a po poetry. It was a gift to the queen. I don't know, I doubt if she had time to read it. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably not. That's the 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 nice thing about the poems that you've written in late beginner. Our guest on the program is is Donald Cohen is they are thought provoking as you're reading them. One of my favorites is, is Anthem for Oldies, and that's on the back of the book. Uh, talk about it writing that, because as I'm reading it, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is right on. We're not dead yet. Yes, exactly. I have a <laughs> good friend who, who read it well before it was published. And he said it sounds exactly as if it was directed to me personally. <laughs> See, no, I thought you were writing it for me. I'm sure people of our age will read it and think, okay, Donald was thinking of us as uh, thinking of me as he was, he was writing that poem. Once you started and collecting and then going back, you open that drawer and you're, you're going back through the poetry. Then the next decision is, okay, what do I do with it? And you made the decision to publish. Talk about that. It's one thing to write, to save, and to go back and uh, enjoy reading the poetry that you'd written before. But then the publication process... Talk about that when you decided, okay, I really want to share these with others. Yeah, well, I think they, they reflect, today I would say they reflect a rather um, put back uh, uh, circumstance and they would say, oh, old stuff and so forth. We have a kind of youth demonstration style social uh, government these days. And um, for some of the more mature people, it's, it's a kind of reflo refers as a whole to the way that the society has changed, except in very uh, important uh, sentiments, such as uh, the one about the old man visiting the graveyard. For example, um, and uh, it becomes a, a relic, as it were. But we don't know whether it's going to be remembered. I think the thing is that if you write a novel, 
or if anyone can write a novel, um, uh, it will live or die by its narrative quality and uh, require a lot of attention. And you either you like it or you don't like it. But this is in the form of a book of poetry. There may be one uh, that appeals to someone. And there certainly are many that will appeal in the book Late Beginner, Donald Cohen, our guest on This Week in America. His website is donaldcohenbooks.com. It's available uh, Kindle, paperback, uh, digital. You find information at uh, Amazon as well. Information on ordering the book at information on Donald and his uh, legendary career is available at his website, donaldcohenbooks.com. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. After all that you've done, the, the sound editing with, with Yellow Submarine for the Beatles, the movies, the, the TV okay. that, 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 yeah, that I had mentioned, how enjoyable is this? I get the impression in reading and, and, and listening to you talk about it, the poetry is really one of the creative outlets that you're most fond of. I didn't write. It was, uh, they had their own writers and there wasn't much text in it anyway. It was a kind of musical from beginning to end. But um, what was funny was that uh, I got hired because the company that, that uh, we wanted to make the film, which animation is very tedious business, uh, he, they chose me because I'd been working on feature films and they had never written, they had never actually made it a movie or anything that was longer than two or three minutes because they were advertising. And uh, so the, everyone was sort of learning how it works as it went along. And uh, we were kind of inspiration in, in, the, in the sky, beauty in the sky, because we saw some racehorses on, on a piece of, uh, a piece of uh, film. Well, we were looking at what they do in our narration. Is you, you look at various movements of various creatures, in real or invented, and uh, and that acts as a narr narrative base to the to the rest of it. But the sound thing was that uh, the, I always had some arguments that, that there should be should be less incidental music, which was perfectly good music, of course. Uh, because to make funny noises uh, would then free the uh, Beatles to be surrounded by something which wasn't competing with them. And, uh, they never accepted that. But, uh, also, I had I had a secret test. Is that uh, they said, okay, well, give this guy this, this sequence of three three minutes, and. Uh, We'll decide whether to keep him on or not. <laughs> and I, I, I have never had anything to do with a, uh, an animated film anyway. But uh, nobody told me, and I just sort of looked at it. And it had the few funny noises which had been recorded from advertising. It's obvious that it was a much bigger job than that. And uh, I took on another colleague as a, as a also editing you know, sound and we ended up doing crazy things like uh, we hired the whole of the uh, the, 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 the uh, cork orchestra all the the percussion instruments of the of the, of the big, big orchestra in, in London and uh, we got noises that no one had ever heard except for strange music. And those kind of things. So anyway, they kept it on. And I, I walked into the dubbing theater with, with piles of film and said, here, here we are. I had 26 parallel uh, sounds for a three-minute job. Wow. <laughs> they, they, they liked that, so I kept it, I kept it going. And the uh, the rest is history, as they say. You could actually write a book about your experiences working on the uh, on the Yellow Submarine. We've got a couple minutes left in the program. You've got such a fascinating life, and it's reflected 
in your art, in the poetry, in the book Late Beginner. Let's talk briefly about that. I understand the, the first voyage you went on was you were two months old. Uh, war breaks out in Europe. You're in a blackened ship uh, coming to the U.S. by the way of Australia. Traveled yeah. around the world, worked on a number of projects. Uh, so basically, when you write poetry, you've got a, a, a pretty broad reflection. You've lived a pretty good life, haven't you? Yes. It, uh, the, uh, should I say, the, the raw material was uh, except for the stuff about the mountain. The raw material was not, I was not as, as rare, but I mean, I was only a child. But uh, I remember that we were in a boat which was black. And the windows are black. They were possible of uh, U-boats sinking it, which uh, my, I don't. Know, also, my father had a crazy escape from Prague in, in, the, in the morning. When, uh, uh, the Nazis came in the afternoon. We were all lucky that his initiative. He never spoke about it. It took a long time to find out. At least the basic things of what he was doing. So we went from this blackened ship with the windows closed and ended up in Australia and then from Australia to uh, San Francisco on an American ship. An American wasn't in the war. And uh, then there were you know, like dancing on the decks and music and funny, you know, clothes and everything. <laughs> Trucks was enormous. And uh, Later on, well, it's apparently not in this book, and, um, when the war ended, uh, I was on the Air Force Base, and my, my uh, son-in-law was uh, an officer, and uh, then we left to go to New York, because my father's partner was there. And uh, the train started every day place the train stopped at and all the people came out of the streets onto the tracks to wave them goodbye and say, you know, the war's over, and the war is over. I remember that I was about yeah, seven or eight years old. Yes. <laughs> but uh, that, that was intriguing. But one thing, what I was going off key, um, it, the business of you know, the narratives is that a poem doesn't exist because of the other ones in the book. And it's when you take the poem in Victor, which is, uh, I am captain of my soul, and so forth. It remains as, uh, well, solving the South African problem, at least for a temporary, it's not much worse since then in that respect, to, uh, to make people more conscious of their faults and to get them to, to, together again, which may or may not happen. It's still not quite happening, but they've got a better president now than they had since uh, the, um, the, the previous one. Donald, thank you. Uh... I just want to say, if you just finish that and say that you could write like Spencer uh, six volumes for uh, for, for one poem, but perhaps only one of them is going to last that long. So passes in the passing of the zane, the leaf that rubs the flower, no more to flourish off the first uh, decay, but soon comes age, it will have pride, the flower. Well, that's in the 17th century, and, and it's out of a book with six, six volumes. It's the in, individual ones, each one stands on its own. With us on This Week in America from Switzerland is Donald Cohen. He's the author of the poetry book, Late Beginner, donaldcohenbooks.com. Uh, through his poetry, Donald frames colorful, sometimes harsh truths about aging, religion, war, peace, human conditions, all topics in the book, Late Beginner. Information, of course, at the website, donaldcohenbooks.com. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us back on today's program after these messages.